everybody. We are down at Poiki Beach. Right behind me is the 2018 Lava Flow. And what we're doing today is we're checking the development of the sand, the movement of it, which has been collecting since the end of the 2018 eruption. For those of you not familiar with Poiki Beach, the sand was never here but prior to the 2018 eruption. All this washed in afterwards. You can see this giant beach here, right? And what it did is it ended up blocking access to the area's only boat ramp right over there. This is the only boat ramp between basically Hilo and Kau. Large amount of area, the only way to get in the water, now gone. So what we're looking at here today is to see how much the sand has moved compared to the last time we've been down here, but also to check the temperature of these ponds. These ponds, following the end of the eruption and prior to the eruption, were around body temperature. They were warm ponds. But after the 2018 eruption, in July 2020, the temperatures went up. They didn't just go up a little bit, they went up uh, several degrees. So where now these ponds are about 105, 106 degrees Fahrenheit. Right, so these are hot ponds now. It's a nice hot tub in some of them at some points. So we're checking to see today if the temperature is still high, right? Still at that elevated level. In the explanation that we put out previously, what we were explaining was that what we think is actually happening is that the heat buildup is the heat trickling through finally from the 2018 eruption. It takes that long for it to get through, right? The heat can transit through the water faster than the water can actually transit itself. So today we're gonna to check to see if the temperatures still remain. One of the things that we speculate is that the temperatures will remain at an elevated rate for the foreseeable future as this new lava deposit is not gonna change significantly in the next months to years to decades. All right guys, so let's go check them out. All right, so we made it down to the first top pond that we test out. As you can see, this is a very, very low tide. This is probably the lowest tide that I've been able to get down here for. You can see the discoloration on the rocks as the water level usually comes up significantly higher. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to test with a infrared temperature gun what the heat, what the temperature of this water is here. Oh, we found the hot spot. You see that the little difference? So right in there. So, yep, still hot. I can think of your, that 98 reading is the rock, right? Because all throughout here, you can see that rock, 105, 106, right? So still at that elevated rate. If you look closely into the water, you can see the the ripples and there's the ripples that you see there are being caused by the upwelling of water beneath that area and it's kind of hard to tell in the video but you know, being here in person that is what I am seeing there. Right, this is the back of Second Bay. Two, 103 still hot this is about what this thing has been measuring at this one's been a little weird a little variable um, depending on the tide but today it is hot and it's a very low tide normally this thing would be filled up now you can see how the temperature across the pond isn't hot as some of the areas like this one where water's coming in to the system. 106.7, go out a little ways. 103, there you get the 90s. All right, now this hot pond here predates the 2018 eruption. This area it's a well-known hot pond for many of the people that live around here. But before the 2018 eruption, it was around body temperature. Right around there, 
hot days, cold days, depending on the tides. But since the eruption, that since July 2020, we've gone up a little bit. Now we gotta look for the hot spot again because it changes with the tides. Down in there, 102. Two, 103. Now this one's been measured as hot as 106 degrees Fahrenheit, but it is variable. And it is an extremely low tide currently. All right, the final hop on that I always check is the boat ramp. You can see how high that wall of sand is blocking the access to the ocean on the former break wall on the dock and the newly moved lifeguard stand over there. Area has been off limits or not off limits, but closed for fishermen since 2018, immediately following the eruption. But this area right here, this little pond, it's kind of always been the warmer area. So we're gonna check it, see what it comes out to. Ooh, cool today, huh? All right, so today, when it's extremely low tide, this pond does not get the hot. So this thing has been well above 100 degrees previously. Let's go check the main pond itself. See if there's anything going on over here. Yep, I mean, this one has been the cooler one. You can see it's a much, much bigger body of water. The other one's much deeper. And also it seems like the variation in the tide has made a difference in where the water is coming out and where the, the heat is, which I currently do not know. Looking down here, don't really see any upwellings of water either. All right guys, that does it for Poiki today. One thing we found out is the temperatures did not drop at the hot ponds. They remain at an elevated temperature. We also could see that the beach really hasn't changed all that much. It mostly remains at the same uh, depth and length that we saw before. Some oscillation, of course, but really the most significant changes are past us. Um, and now it's more slow changes over time. The temperatures at 106, 105 degrees is what we have been seeing in that area for the past six, eight months. And that was definitely the lowest tide that I've seen it at down there. But we continue to track uh, the movements of the sand and the temperatures at Boiki. The interesting thing again is that we didn't see the temperature change following the eruption or during the eruption. It took a year and a half to two years after the eruption ended before those temperature changes happened. And since then they've remained elevated. And there's really no reason to suspect that, that change, those are gonna change again anytime soon. The lava beneath the ground in the rift is very well insulated and it will retain its heat in its liquid form for decades to come. And we just expect the water to remain elevated down there as well. Really is a nice place. Uh, you know, Poiki is forever changed. I still prefer the old Poiki, but that's just me. I know a lot of people really like the the sand. They they think the sand is you know an improvement on the old Poiki. But the real thing is, is the fishermen no longer can access the area. That hurts the entire community. And yeah, we're, we're still talking about a dredge down there. Uh, the state looking into dredging. The, a channel for the boats to be able to return uh, to the sea, continue their livelihoods, not have to drive all the way into Hilo. And we look forward to that. Well, thank you guys for joining us. We, you know, we continue to track this. We continue to give updates on the volcanoes. So we look forward to seeing you again next time. Aloha.